Hello, Mr. Kimber. Good afternoon, Mr. Kong. May I ask some question of you? Yes, of course. Uh, then, what's the definition of ambiguity, and what do you think about ambiguity in language? Well, ambiguity has a couple of definitions, one of which is having more than one meaning. Another definition is it's vague, and it's indistinct, and obscure. And you ask the question, what do I think about ambiguity in our uh, language? I think it can be intentional. Ambiguity can also be deliberate, same, same idea there. And it can be considered a part of language with a depth of language, especially if it's intentional and deliberate. On the other hand, if it is, uh, if it's done and shows that, that it's not clear or the language is not precise, then we should avoid that kind of ambiguity. I use the example of uh, outstanding in the field. If you're, the writer is trying to make the point that the, the uh, person is eminent and respected, then outstanding could be understandable. But if the writer is making the point that the individual is standing in the field, then that should be made clear in the context of the writing or in the speaking. So it's an example of outstanding in the field could be interpreted two ways, but in the context of it, it should be clear to the reader or the writer. Uh, where I was talking a bit before about the idea of uh, deliberate and intentional ambiguity. I use an example from uh, Shakespeare's Julius Caesar. Uh, Mark Antony has been allowed to give a speech following the death of Julius Caesar. Mark Antony was a friend of Julius Caesar and hence he was probably opposed to anyone who would kill Julius Caesar. But after Brutus and his forces killed Julius Caesar, he, was, uh, he encouraged Mark Antony to speak to the people, and Mark Antony did. He started out by talking about the, the work of those men who killed Julius Caesar. He said they were honorable men, and the audience accepted that. He accept, they accepted the idea that the men did this for an honorable cause. That was for the good of Rome. But as Mark Antony continued this speech, notice I'm saying this is uh, an example of intentional and deliberate ambiguity. The speaker, Mark Antony, moves from defining honorable as good, he slowly and surely moves to the opposite, that what the conspirators did was dishonorable. And finally, at the end of his funeral oration, he has, uh, he has whetted the appetites and he's excited the audience to a point that they want to re take revenge on those men who did this dishonorable deed. So the movement is all the way from honorable to dishonorable, but Shakespeare uses only one word though. He focuses on only that one word honorable. And that's a, a very good and legitimate way of using uh, ambiguity. I think it would be called, in this case, uh, dramatic ambiguity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Surely. I appreciate your cooperation. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you. <laughs>